It was May 31, 1926. Presiding Elder John Ellis of the Augusta District holds a meeting to discuss new territory for a Methodist church way out on the hill. By the fall of that year, members from St. John, St. James and Woodlawn, and others had signed the charter. 161 people. The new church worshipped in the abandoned Montesano Schoolhouse on Richmond Avenue, known as the Little Red Schoolhouse. The women were called to scrub floors, wash windows, and paint furniture. The men made repairs. The windows were covered with window fannies to imitate stained glass. The first lay leader was Dr. W.T. Price, and the very first appointed pastor was Reverend Thomas Everton, who preached his first sermon on November 28th at 9.45 a.m. on the Lure of the Heights. 176 attended. Whenever a church is started from scratch, many ministries have to come online rather quickly. So, in the beginning, there were several firsts. The choir was led by Dr. Edward Clark for the next 25 years, and the first accompanist was the preacher's wife, Miss Everton. Women's Missionary Society, forerunner of the WSCS, UMW, Women's Ministry, and the Ellis Sunday School Bible Class for Women, named after the superintendent who saw the vision in new territory out on the hill. Men's Bible Class and the Wesley Brotherhood was started. In 1927, the Epworth League was formed for youth with 52 members, separated into two groups, the Fords and the Cadillac. Also, two acres of property were purchased on Montesano and McDowell Roads for $3,500 for the future building of a sanctuary. In 1930, the church minutes noted that the church was at a low ebb, almost disbanding. Of course, these were the Depression years. In spite of the Depression, in 1931, a parsonage was built on the property for the pastor's family. It's still standing today. Reverend Allison, the first pastor's family to live in the parsonage pitched a huge tent on the property for seasonal revivals where many young people attended. In 1934, Reverend Twiggs was appointed as the pastor and told the congregation, It's not what you've done, but where you are going. The church renovated an old house on the property for evening worship and called it Twiggs Chapel. Trinity on the Hill worshipped in the Montesano schoolhouse for nine years. A new era begins when the ground was broken for the first sanctuary on the property. It was completed in 1935 at a cost of $11,500, with Bishop Candler preaching the dedication service. The pews were handmade by Preacher Twiggs and the men of the church. It was so hot in the summer that evening worship was held outside in the shade of the church building. A couple of old World War I vintage barracks from Camp Hancock at Daniel Field were moved to the property to serve as classrooms. In 1931, Charlie Shaw was hired as the first custodian while still in the schoolhouse. Many times, the official board had to warn the congregation to stop getting Charlie to help with their special projects. He didn't have time to do his church job. Charlie worked all the way through three sanctuaries, including the main sanctuary, in 1958. He retired in 1967 with 36 years of service, the longest tenured employee in our church history. Several key lay people in this period were Viola Shields, who worked 45 years in the children's department as a volunteer, Dr. F. L. Dameron and wife Edna, who worked with the youth from the very beginning and throughout these middle years, even allowing them to have dances. Dinner on the grounds was also a favorite, especially when no fellowship hall existed. In the war years of 1941 to 1944, over 6,000 soldiers passed through the doors of Trinity enjoying Christian fellowship and suppers and lunches and wholesome recreation through Camp Gordon and the Arsenal. Letters of appreciation were received from as far away as North Africa, the rationing board thought so highly of the church's ministry that the church was issued all the coffee and sugar stamps it needed. After the war years, in 1944, Reverend Elizer was tired of waiting on the people to build much needed Sunday school space. So he started excavating a huge hole behind the sanctuary. 
The church leaders caught on and filled the hole with the new three-story modern educational building and the enlargement of the sanctuary, now chapel, with transom seating, finished in 1948 at a cost of $102,000. In 1951, Trinity shared its new buildings with the Jewish congregation Children of Israel for seven months while their new facilities were built out on Walton Way. In 1953, we have the first mention of a four-year-old weekday nursery that is now the Trinity on the Hill Preschool. Also, a new fellowship hall was built to replace the old barracks. It was called Barton Hall, after the preacher Hamby Barton, and added 5,000 square feet for fellowship, eating, and recreation. In 1954, evangelist Billy Graham and Tennessee Governor Frank Clement made a surprise visit to the Christmas celebration on Sunday morning. They were in town playing golf at the National Golf Course. Governor Clement had attended Trinity while a soldier at Camp Gordon in World War II. 1954 was the year the church started double worship services, and it was noted in the minutes that parking was becoming a problem. In 1958, Reverend Wallace Wiggins is appointed to Trinity on the Hill, and a new sanctuary with balcony is built that seats 800. It's the one you're sitting in now. Later, two stained glass windows are added. In 1962, 15 acres on Clark Hill Lake is leased from the Court for Ministry. It was affectionately called Trinity on the Lake. In 1969, the first acolyte ministry was started with kids like Kirk Bozeman and Mike Long in the first class. Both would later become United Methodist Pastors. In 1972, Reverend Randy Pollard becomes the senior pastor and puts the church in hyperdrive. The Sunday evening worship became known as Happy Hour. August became Camp Meeting Month and February was Winter Camp Meeting. The television ministry was started with one camera and shown with a one-week delay on Augusta Television. William Docker, Dan Musgrave, Jimmy Long, and Henry Pruitt were the early leaders in this ministry. In 1986, Tom Green became the director of television ministries and is currently serving his 30th year. The youth choir becomes a national touring choir in 1978. The name, Love Unlimited, was created by Reverend Pollard and choir director Craig Watson while on a trip to California. In 1977, the first poinsettias are sold to support the touring youth group. And in 1978, the first Love Unlimited choir tour goes to Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana with the theme, You Can Fly. But they took a bus. In 1972, a new 2000 pipe Schlicker organ, which was built in Germany and the US, is installed. In 1973, the preschool building is built for extended ministries to small children on Sundays and weekdays. In 1974, Carillon bells are installed in the bell tower by the Kolke family. 1978, Reverend Jerry Taylor started Super Saturday Ministry for challenged adults. From 1979, to 1989, Reverend Hubert Flanagan is appointed and becomes the longest tenured senior pastor at 10 years. Through 1987 to 1988, under Reverend Flanagan's leadership, Wesley Hall and the gym are constructed. David Jones is appointed in 1993, who hires many of the staff we see now, including Greg Hatfield in 1996, Carol Spires also in 1996. Roy and Kathy McVeigh in 1997, and Danny and Chris Key in 2000. In the year 2000, the first children's consignment sale for missions is started by Marcia Jones. Also, a new two-story educational and office building replaces Old Barton Hall and is named after Reverend Flanagan. Also, a new facility is built for the youth. In 2004, Reverend Steve Dodson introduces a special mission pledge program. In 2011, the church literally raises the roof of the sanctuary for a total renovation of the sanctuary, the organ, choir stained glass, and television ministry under Reverend Dan Brown. At 90 years young, Trinity on the Hill stands on the shoulders of thousands of faithful men and women, boys and girls. 
As we celebrate this faithful past, we pledge ourselves to the future advancement of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ.